Hi gang, Chalice here. Star date 44372.1930, June 25th, 2021, approximately 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So how's everybody doing? Ready for the weekend? For those who are not working the weekend, and for those who are, I'm sorry, um, but it's good to be working. Uh, so uh, today, today, uh, well, okay, while I'm here, if you could uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and share, um, maybe that'll help get the, get the word out. So um, today, um, we're talk a little bit about assertions and citations. I um, just finished a legal research course class and uh, legal research and writing. Um, the first part is about research and how to cite. And in it, um, and a major part of the class is uh, talked about, uh, was about citations. Uh, in other words, citing backup or support for any assertion you make or any claim you make in any of your pleadings or motions or what have you. Uh, you must cite to a law or a case law. And I cringe there because cases aren't law. Only legislation can be law. Um, but cases are used as law. And that's wrong. That's a whole nother. That's not the point here. So let me try not to get distracted. Uh, so in the... Um, so you have to cite to statutes, and most of the citations go to case law of cases that have occurred, and the judge's opinion has, you know, and the and the facts meet the case, and you and you cite back to that case. See, this judge said it this way, so we're gonna go with it this way. <clears throat> but in any case, any any assertion you make um, in a pleading has to be cited to something else. You can't just say something and then, well, we're just gonna go with that. That doesn't work. That'll the judge won't accept that. He'll kick it back. Um, so, but are we even even at that point? Are we sounding a little bit familiar? <laughs> you can't just say you can't just say something and expect the judge is going to take your word for it. Keep those words in mind. We'll come back to those. But um, and everything you have to have a citation, and it is so important. I mean, there's actually a fairly thick. Uh, book and these books are uh, rather small writing called the blue book of citations and it covers I mean pretty much everything you can think of um, uh, On the inside these are some things for Florida if I can make this work right. Oh, this is so ridiculous But um, oh there it comes some of it. Uh -huh. Anyway crap <laughs> anyway, um these are citation formats, different different sources, and and how you and you how you cite. It's it's really. I mean, you could take a whole entire summer semester class just on doing citations, um, and I think in law school they actually do. Uh, but um, it's it's. These are my little bookmarks, and I have a better way to do it. Told to me by the teacher. I've just been too lazy to get to it. Um, and it has some quick references in the back, on the inside, and on the inside too. I'm not trying to sell this book. I don't get any money for the book. Um, but the point, the point for that is to show you how how important citations are, and it is so important, in fact, that it has to be specific. The citation format has to be specific uh, for different kinds of of things that you're citing too. So that's how important it is to support what you claim, what you assert with um, something else that's that's already been established. Um, let me say that again. It is important to uh, for any claim or assertion to cite back to something else that has already been established in order to support your claim or assertion. That is is uh, critical. So taking that theory, or taking that, it's not a theory, it's its something that's done. Um, taking that idea and that uh, methodology, and do we, do we now think that, well, that's only law, it really doesn't apply to anywhere else. But is that really so? Um, you go down to buy a car, 
and the car salesman tells you all these good and wonderful things about the car, but wait, are you just going to sign on a dotted line, pay him the money, and go? Uh, no, um, not most people. Uh, you're going to take it for a test drive. You're going to ask questions. Some people, some people even um, take it to some mechanics who actually offer specific service for pre-buy inspections. For that reason, because you're not going to take their word for it. You want to know if there's anything going on with that car, used or even new. Uh, so guaranteeing means nothing. If you're broke down on the side of the road, uh, just because you have a guarantee doesn't, <laughs> you're still broken down. Um, same thing when you buy a house. Don't you, um, don't you have your inspection, your, your WD, your WDO inspection, your home inspection, um, uh, your title inspection to make sure the title is right. You know, the owner says, oh, my title is good. I have ownership to this property. Well, he's going to have to, that's going to have to be proved, uh, by doing a search. Nobody transfers property without doing a search. And you can't get insurance to cover your title without having a search done. So, um, and it has happened. It's happened a lot. You know, I could say, man, I got some great uh, waterfront property way down in South Florida. Huge waterfront property. You have the place all to yourself, right? I can sell you something like that. A good price too, five grand. I'll give you, I'll give you an acre of land down there. Five grand and you're good to go, right? All right, the contract, I'll do it. Are you going to accept that? No. Um, you're going to want proof. You're going to want backup. You're going to want support to my claim that I actually have this property, that I own the property, that, um, I possess the property and that, um, I have the authority to sell the property. So you see, so this idea of, of citing back to, um, things that have already been established is, is it not just applies, does not just apply to the law or does not apply just to the law. It applies everywhere in real life as well. Um, and no, I'm not intending to teach law or to teach legal anything or give any legal advice. And um, people want to, you know, put disclaimers and all that crap. Uh, I'm not giving legal advice. There's no way it can be interpreted as legal advice except by some, by, except by nothing. So, um, I'm just telling you that this is not legal advice, so don't take it as such. But it is what it is. You do have to cite. So um, and if I tell you to, if I'm going to sell you a piece of land, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, I'm able to sell you that land. Because uh, you buy the land, you give me the five grand, and, and I'm gone, and you're stuck with a piece of paper, and you try to go find that land, you can't get to it. So, um there you have you can't just say something and expect it's gonna you know you're just gonna sign on the dotted line right then and there uh with the car um you know your friend or buddy comes to you man he's got this great 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 money making scheme um give him 10 grand uh he's gonna bring you he's gonna bring you 15 grand in a month right well are you gonna jump into that no not likely you're gonna want to look into it you want some you want some numbers you want some you want to see what's going on what the business is doing how it's doing who's running it and so on and so forth so in other words through all these examples um you're not just going to take you're not going to take somebody's word for something just because they said it right you know that would be just silly um especially when it's and when it's your money involved you're not going to do that uh, are you uh, so um can you think of any other examples where you would want, you know, to have some sort of backup or support or, or justify what somebody else is telling you, uh, the words is that um, somebody else is telling you? Think of some other examples that you do, perhaps maybe without even thinking, um, uh, thinking about it. You, but now you can stop and think, OK, what else? What else am I doing? I'm not I'm not going to take their words for it, am I? Um, so. All, so all of these examples are showing that um, it's generally not a good idea. It's always not a good idea just because to 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 proceed uh, just because somebody said something on the words that somebody said. Especially you don't want to proceed to, you know, lose your job. Are you going to abandon your job or quit your job or stop working because somebody said something? 
No, not not when you got bills to pay. Uh, so then why is it? You know, it just seems common sense that we would want that we would want some sort of backup or support for something somebody says before we start throwing our money away or throwing our livelihood away. Um, so why then would we accept hook, line, and sinker? I mean, without the first question, uh, the words uh, somebody says who uh, actually makes millions, tens of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions on what he's telling you. We're going to believe that, but uh, a car dealer who's going to make maybe a thousand or two or five on selling you a car, you're not going to take his word for nothing. You're going to test drive, look under the hood, whatever you're going to do. But somebody who's going to make you close down your business or are going to put you out of work because the business owner has to close down on the words without one single shred of evidence, no citation, no backup, no support at all. Um, and we're going to do this. Um, <laughs> and, and I know you know what I'm talking about, um, but it really doesn't matter because it happens all the time in government. Uh, they'll tell you something and um, people will just believe it just because they said so. And that's a fallacy. It's I'm not sure the official word is term is called, but a fallacy of authority or some such. Um, and just because these people are sitting in Washington does not automatically give them authority, does not automatically um, give them expertise at all. Uh, just because they sit there... <laughs> And steal money from you doesn't make them doesn't make them that they you know know what they're doing or know what it is they're telling you. So um, that means that means if we're if we're going to accept somebody's word without questioning, without without wanting to see any sort of uh, backup or support, um, I mean even in a car dealership, some some of these. They used to have, you know, seal, you know, one uh, sales, one penny over invoice. We'll show you the invoice, right? There's your backup. Um, you're out of work, sitting at home, or you've been told to close your business. Where is that invoice? Where is that backup uh, that says it, that what you're, what you, what you've been told to do is really going to make any difference? Uh, it's just not there. And by the way, uh, statistics are not acceptable as a citation without, unless, without or unless, um, it's been, um, where did my notes go? Crud. Uh, without full disclosure, I mean absolute full disclosure, how the numbers were, how the numbers were collected, how they were reported, what are the definitions of the terms used, uh, what are the definitions of the counts that were used, and, and, and has to be subject to cross-examination. In other words, um, if you provide statistics uh, to back up your claim, you have to allow those statistics to be questioned and scrutinized by the opposition. So, um, but um, have we done that even? They keep showing in these charts and graphs and stuff, but has anybody, people have questioned them, but um, it's, they've been shut down, those who do. So they expect you just to, to to read that and accept it because they told you. So why are why are we having the mindset be, that because they said so we have to accept it? And, and also, if if you see it, if you see it on the news, sorry, I hit the mute button. Uh, if you see three times now, if if you see it on the news, that that's actually called uh, hearsay. That's nothing but hearsay, um, which by itself is not acceptable. There is, you don't have any, even if they give you a direct quote from somebody, um, that's still hearsay because you don't have the entire context uh, of the quote. So, um, but most of these <laughs> reporters and things, they're basic, it's just even a video of something, it's still hearsay. So, because, because the first, and the first thing, because, there is no option to scrutinize it by there is no option or availability for any opposition to question it 
Uh, so that's also one thing. There is no, um, boy, look at all these scams. There is no, um, <laughs> in the courtroom, there's nothing presented without giving the opposition a chance to question it from either side. So why in, why in life are we going to ruin our lives and then, and then not without the opportunity to question? So here's, um, so that's basically what it comes down to. When, when there are, when people are saying something, politicians, people who are bought and paid for by the politicians, the news people, everybody, anybody who tells you something, um, you want some sort of support or backup. Don't just accept it because they said so or because you, you think they have some sort of authoritarian position or authority position or knowledge position or position of knowledge or expertise. No, you want to see, uh, just like the Wendy's commercial, where's the beef? You want to see that beef. Um, and you want to be able to question it. You must be able to question it, scrutinize it, dig into it, do an audit. Um, oh, here's another example. Um, big companies always have to have an annual audit because, you know, the shareholders want to know, um, you know, just because they put a report, hey, hey, we made $5 billion this year. Well, you put that out to the shareholders. That's not sufficient. You have to have um, an independent audit so that um, you so that they can verify that those numbers were actually good numbers. Uh, so, but why? And everything else in life, do we want some sort of support or backup? But on this, when we're ruining our lives, do we not demand anything at all? Uh, we just take the word for it, and then that's it. Uh, why do we do that? So that's what that's what this um, video log is about. It, it, it's it's about not taking the words the words from somebody, anybody, a group, without having to have without some legitimate, um, non-conflicted uh, backup that justifies their words. So that's what we need to do. So, um, and we still can always, I mean, it's our job. So, but um, let me put an end to it. Let me put a stop to uh, my blathering now because uh, it's already been like 17 and a half, almost 18 minutes. Um, wanted to go kind of quickly. I didn't expect to talk so long. So anyway, go look. Go, um, uh, Ryan Christian at TLAV says, question everything. And and it's correct. That's, you know, that's his motto, question everything. So um, I'll add a little bit more to that and say, look for the backup. What are the sources? Where is, where is the beef? You know, go start finding out where is the beef. Start scrutinizing what's being told, how it's being told, the words that are being said. Um, look up definitions, you know, find the charts and find out the graphs and how, how protocols were set in order to produce those graphs. You know, start digging, start digging into this stuff. And it really doesn't take much because all, all that, all that stuff is out there. It just takes a little bit to go look. So go digging and, um, and as always, while you're digging to keep yourself digging, stay courageous.